Hey guys, welcome back to the series where we learn about Niagara by making this Niagara Falls. Now this is the last episode in the series and we're gonna finish by making these bubbles. We'll start by making the simple material for these bubbles and then dive into Niagara to animate them by using curves. Now everything knowledge wise should be covered in this series so far, so take this as a final review of everything we've learned. Now let's get started. So let's first look at what we're gonna make today, which is the bubbles. So I'm gonna isolate this from the waterfall now. And you can see it's basically square sprites with a custom material on it. So we can control the size and the thickness of these bubbles. And also in Niagara, we need to control the movement, which is like coming from deep down under the water, rising up and then expanding in size when it reaches the surface. So if I turn on the wireframe here, you can see it more clearly how the sprites are moving upwards and rotating. Okay, now let's first look at the materials. If you look at the shape of the final product, it's basically a square. So first of all, let us think about how we can make a square using only UV and some math. So I've got a UV text coordinate node here. And first of all, I'm just going to isolate the G axis, which is the vertical one. And then here I'm going to use a sphere mask with B plugged into 0.5. And the radius is using this bubble size parameter with the hardness set to 100. So basically anything within the range of 0.25 from 0.5, which is the range from 0.25 to 0.75, it will be 1 in the preview you can see here. And this is going on the vertical axes. So we need to do another one using the R channel of the texture coordinates. Same setup, but here we're gonna use a min node, which stands for minimum, which means it's gonna take the A and B input, compare the values and select the lower value. So in our case, it kind of acts like a logical AND node which means it needs to be both one, which is this red color here, in order to show up in the final result. So when we plugged it into this min node, we get our square. And the cool thing is we can control the bubble size here. So if I set in 0.3, you can see the square got bigger. 0.5 would be the full range of the square. 0.2 or something would be a smaller square. So now we know how to make a square by using UVs. We need to make a square hole inside it and just get the edge of a square. So how we're gonna get the edge is we're gonna have the same setup here. The nodes that are selected right now is all the same. But for the radius, here we're gonna add a edge width to the original bubble size. So we'll get a slightly bigger square. And then here we're gonna subtract this from the previous node we get, which gives us the hollow square that we want. And we're just gonna plug this into the opacity here, multiplied by the opacity from the particle color node, and then just plug in the RGB channel to emissive color. So now if we create a material instance from it, we can see I can control the bubble size using this parameter and the edge actually stays the same so if I control the edge width I get a thicker or thinner bubble depending on the value of the edge width so after this is done we actually need dynamic parameters instead of these material parameters because we're gonna control the values in Niagara so we're just gonna create a dynamic parameter node I've named the index 0 to edge width index 1 to bubble size and give it a default value so we're just gonna plug this in and remember to hit apply. Okay, now let's jump into Niagara right now. First of all, we need our material set to the square bubble one we just made. Alignment and facing mode is custom alignment because we're gonna adjust that later. And that's it for the sprite render. Now it's an infinite looping emitter. We're gonna set a spawn rate of 10. Of course, you could choose more if you like. For the initialized particle, some randomness in the lifetime. This is also going to control the speed of the bubbles moving upwards. For example, if I set this to 0.5 and 1, the bubbles will rise up much faster. So this is also, depending on the timing you might like, you could change the value of the lifetime. For the color, I chose white, blue, and teal, and some randomness. Also some randomness in the size. Pretty simple. For the shape location, it's using a box. 
The dimensions are pretty much just covering our range for the waterfall, but we need to offset this by negative 750 so the bubbles will spawn from below the water surface now on to the particle update first of all sprite facing and alignment it's facing positive z alignment is set to the x-axis scale color is basically just a fade in and fade out on the alpha channel sprite rotation rate is a constant of 50 and these last three modules is how we're gonna move these bubble sprites. So first of all, position. So the main goal for this is we're gonna directly set the particle's position by using multiply vectors. So first of all, we're gonna get the initial position. Be sure to get the one with the namespace of initial because this is gonna give us the correct calculations. Now we're gonna multiply by vector X and Y will be all one, which means the X, Y coordinates won't move. But for the Z, we're going to use a float from curve and it's going to start from one, which is the original value and then shrink down to zero. The zero here is going to be set at the timing of 0 0.6. So we need to remember the 0 0.6 because we're going to use it later. Now, although by multiplying by a value on the Z channel, that's less than one, we're gonna decrease the values. But because we were spawning our sprites with a negative z-axis, so actually multiplying it with like 0 0.5 actually moves its z-coordinate upwards. So it's gonna go from a negative value and go to zero at the end. I also added a jitter position, which just gives us this subtle movement of the bubbles. You can see the bubbles like kind of shakes a bit as it gets closer to the surface and then stops when it finally reaches. So this is controlled by this jitter position module. We're gonna control the jitter from zero going up to one. And the timing here will be 0 0.6, which is the timing I said we need to remember because we need to match up timing between these different modules. And then after 0 0.6, it's gonna scale back to zero. And the scale curve here is gonna control how much jitter we want. If I set this to like a very large value of like 50, you can see like the bubbles is intensely shaking, which is like too much. So I'm gonna set it back to six. Now lastly is the dynamic material parameters, which is how we're gonna control the size. Now, if you remember, the bubble size is gonna control the bubble size, obviously. So basically what we have here is the size is gonna be zero, slowly growing up to 0 0.1 here. This timing is also 0 0.6. So at the timing of 0 0.6, the bubble has reached the surface and I want it to expand quickly once it reaches the surface. So we can see here's a sudden increase after 0.6 and then just phase out to 0.5, which is our full size of the bubble. Here for the edge width, I'm gonna set this to one for the most parts. And then after 0.7, it's gonna quickly decrease down to zero. So you can see our bubbles has become thinner towards the end of its lifetime. And remember that I scaled this curve down to 0.15, so our bubbles edge is not too thick. And once you have everything set up, you get these very stylized square bubbles by using custom modules and some dynamic material parameters. And that's a wrap. Congratulations on finishing five videos on Niagara systems and you made a waterfall all by yourself. Most importantly, I hope this gives you the knowledge and confidence to keep learning about VFX and tackle any personal project or ideas that you might have. There's still one part though that's not covered, it's this water plane material that I made. It's basically just a transparent plane, but what's special about it is it automatically creates a foam edge around intersecting objects with it. I've added this material to the Gumroad project as a thank you for your support if you decided to purchase it. So remember to visit the link down below in my description box if you're interested. Now as always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. And in the future, I'm just gonna keep making more VFX content. So let me know what you guys are interested in. Now, see you in the next one. Bye.